This PCB has the highest failure rates in the history of hard drives, and today we're going to recover all the data. Let's take a look. So here it is. This PCB has come into my business for close to 15 years with the exact same problem every time. It's the Notorious 2060 701 triple four. If you look at it from the top, everything looks okay. But wait till you have a look underneath. Let's open it up. The first thing I notice every time is corrosion on all the soldering of the PCB. It may not look it with the naked eye, but generally speaking, every time I open these up, there's brown oxidization and staining over here on this padding. So let's have a look at this PCB under microscope. Usually the solder on a PCB is silver and nice and shiny. But as I move around this PCB, look at those big brown capacitors. Look how corroded and rusted looking they are. All oxidized, everything. The little ones, zoom in there. Uh, fix the focus. See the, the brown oxidization on this little one here is even worse. Resistors, they're all corroded. Practically everything is corroded. The pins of every chip have got brown corrosion. Some of it might be from this uh, felt pad that's between the PCB and the hard drive. But it's everywhere. Everything's corroded. So why is this? Why does this one PCB, the 701444, always come in looking corroded? So this is my hypothesis on what's been happening. These PCBs have found on hard drives from 2007 to about 2010. And I believe there's something wrong with the quality of the solder. Most of them are 2008. So let's have a look at what's happened in that period of time with soldering. Um, the EU came out with the ROHS version 1, which was signed in 2006. So this is the Restriction of Hazardous Substances Directive. And as I say here, it's often referred to as the Lead-Free Directive. So this is for getting rid of lead in solder. So what did they change to from 2006? Well, they went to a SAC combination. Uh, SAC 305 is the most common. And that would be tin. So on our periodic, we got the S for tin, majority tin, A representing AG on the periodic table, silver, and C with a little bit of copper. Now what's known about tin, or well, what we ended up, what they ended up finding out about tin, majority tin in solder, is that it would oxidize. And there's a common um, problem with this um, tin-based solder that they call uh, tin whiskering. And um, what they say on Wikipedia, that uh, the tin whiskers now we don't really see the whiskering i haven't really seen the whiskering effect like you see here where there's actual little wires and stuff but you definitely do see oxidization and corrosion so i'm guessing we've moved away from the leaded solder to a tin based solder i want to show you the back label of this hard drive because right here i'll zoom in we have our ROHS compliance label. These hard drives have always got the same symptoms. They don't power on, they don't spin up, there's no activity at all, and all the warning lights just come on. So let's have a look at what this PCB is doing on the lab power supply. We'll turn the 12 volt channel on first. We've got no activity. It'll be the five volt channel that powers this up and we're getting about 200 milliwatts and we're not seeing much activity there so we can definitely tell this PCB is not responding properly. Let's have a look at the electronics and see if we can find something. 
Let's probe this PCB and we'll do a quick test for shorts to ground with the multimeter. So uh, we'll do the beep test and we'll check this 5 volt. We need to check the 5 volt because that's what powers all the electronics on a 3.5 inch hard drive. So the 5 volt channel, which is these three pins, um, that is not shorted to ground. It comes into here. You've got the D3, D is diode. You've got the capacitor, C is capacitor, and then you've got Q4. Q is transistor. We'll just check a few more of the capacitors around this 5 volt line. They're very corroded. So one side should be, one side will be on ground because they're probably coupling capacitors to smooth out. So no obvious short to grounds ground side, non-ground side on the 12 volts okay, little capacitor here, it's okay. So that's the ground side of this diode, it, so it should beep, and this side's fine. So no shorts. A lot of people who know how hard drive PCB works might be saying, well, why don't you just change the PCB, swap the BIOS chip to another hard drive, another PCB? Well, I've got some bad news. If you have a look up here, there is no BIOS chip we can swap. It's actually embedded into this CPU chip. Um, this one doesn't use one, so we can't swap it at all. Um, and if you're wondering what I'm talking about, usually most would have a little chip like that, and it would be soldered to the board with the BIOS information. But we don't have that on this model. It's a lot harder. We have to work a different way. Let's test the tin whiskers hypothesis by spraying it with some isopropyl alcohol and using a nice soft toothbrush to clean any of these so-called tin whiskers away. Now while that's drying, let's go back and test that little short circuit we found. So we'll do the beep test. Um, these capacitors down here. So one side's ground, should beep. This side's not beeping anymore. There you go. The resistance is definitely lowered. There's still some resistance there to ground, but it's not as bad as you can. That's interesting. Let's uh, screw it on and see what happens. So I've connected it back up, but it's still not spinning. I've also put some little jumpers in it to try the uh, ROM loader mode or kernel mode, and I'm not getting activity there either. Okay, I'm going back to my trusty old faithful spare working PCB, and let's turn it on. Let's have a listen. You can hear that it is spinning up, but this drive won't work because this PCB doesn't have the correct uh, BIOS chip for this drive. So we have to solve that now using special tools. Okay, so we have our hard drive. We have a ready state down the bottom left. We're going to go to Western Digital. We know it's a Marvel CPU. And we're going to detect the family from Western Digital that this hard drive is. It's gone busy. We're not getting much of a feedback yet. Okay, it's spun the drive up, so that's why it's taking so long, and it's gonna fail. Yep, so let's try and auto detect again. If it's gonna keep spinning the drive, we'll probably have to put some kernel mode jumpers into it. That drive is spinning. So this is probably a bad sign that the donor ROM on this PCB is not compatible with this hard drive. Um, Sequonia was what I believe my donor PCB is. Let's try and get in. I have no idea what the donor BIOS chip I'm using is, so I'll have to dig through my database and try and find something that is similar to the patient hard drive we have. Yeah, it's spinning up the drive and it's just clicking. 
So we're not getting anywhere here. And it will fail. Let's go get the drive and have a look what it is. Okay, so I'm back again. I have put jumpers into the hard drive to start it in a safe mode. This is a special boot ROM bootloader mode so we can interact with the software of the PCB. So now if I auto detect, it's not going to spin the hard drive up. So we've got a family. Let's enter the family. We've got access to this PCB. So what we need to do is program the BIOS chip from one that we've got in our database. So it looks like the BIOS we have in our donor PCB is for a 160 gig version and we've got a 250 gig version so I'm going to try and write one see if we can find something a bit closer uh, from the database and we do have some possible ones um, let's go down here and we got the ROM here if it's a matching size or not let's try that Okay, that worked. So that wrote the ROM. Let's see if it's enough to access the firmware on this hard drive. So let's spin it back up. Okay, drive is spinning. Okay, much better. Drive is continuing to spin this time. That's a much a tornado 2D. So let's enter and see if we can access the firmware. We just need to get close enough. Okay, we're trying now. Doesn't sound too good. Uh, let's match the drive's geometry. Do we have access? We might. Yes, we might have it here. So let's do a backup. We've got access by ID. Yes, we do. Okay, we've got access to the drive's firmware. This is good. And we're reading all the modules now. Just going to check the health of these modules. Um, what are we going to look for? So a quick look at the health. Everything looks okay. Um, let's just do some checks. Okay. Right, everything looks normal. Let's make a new ROM. Okay, that's better. We got access to it now. We should be able to build a new ROM. So we're getting the modules from the firmware. Um, what do we got to do? It's been a while. Okay, let's call this. Let's call this new ROM for YouTube. Okay, did it save that? I think it did. Let's put the new one. What have we got? Here we go. New ROM for YouTube. So let's write that. Here we go. It's erasing the donor ROM. Okay, that's finished. That's okay. Let's turn it off and on again. And let's listen in for symptoms. This driver spinning up is currently busy. Okay, that sounds good. Let's see what it's done with the ID. Okay. 320. That is weird. What do we got? Okay, so we're still a bit off. 320 gig. That is weird. We got a 250 gig. Um, is that serial number the same? That must be from... 
Okay, yeah, that's the correct serial number, but the capacity is wrong. So we've got to write the ROM modules as well. Um, here they are. Um, where would that be? Okay, so we've got to write all these ROM modules. I should have written it from here. It doesn't matter. It would have saved me a little bit of time. So um, we got hex 0B right to hard drive whoops I did it twice sorry and the next one hex 0a okay it's gone busy if you look down here and let's check the log okay seems to be working um, let's go to hex 47 Some are smaller than others. And for F, this is all part of the BIOS firmware. Okay. So that's all done. Let's turn it off and on again. We should have the correct BIOS firmware program now. So we've turned it off and on. It's busy. It's come ready. Let's uh, refresh. We're still getting 320 gig. That is weird as hell. Um, let's have a look at accessing this drive. No, we don't. Okay, we still got problems. We still got more work to do, and that ID is weird as hell. So the serial number is correct. However, the model is incorrect, and that's because my hybrid BIOS firmware something is off this is definitely a WD 2500AAJS uh, we've got better access to the firmware now so I'm going to attempt to rebuild that ROM again um, where were we okay. okay let's ROM build from system area data so we should have access to the system error. We do. We've got all this information. Let's try this again. Write the system area module. So it's 109. A bit technical now if you're not used to the high ends of firmware data recovery. And we'll switch it off and we'll go through the other modules. That's all done. Let's repower the drive and see if we've gotten closer so we're busy at the moment as we spin up let's go back into the utility 320 gig that is weird as hell okay tornado 2d family all right let's do some more probing so after tracking down some closer matching firmware i'm now got the correct id for this hard drive I'll turn that back on Spinning up. And we'll just refresh this ID. So that's our correct model now, so we can get the data back off this drive. If you're new to this channel, welcome. I upload regular data recovery videos. Hope to see you next time.